Hey everyone, Raider here. Hope you're all doing great and having a fantastic day. Hope everyone had a fantastic holiday season as well. Um, so finally back from a little break from YouTube. Kind of stepped away for a couple weeks. Got sick. The family got sick. You know how it goes this time of year. So just kind of getting back into the swing of things. So for my regular supporters, this video is going to be a little bit different than what I usually do. So uh, normally we talk about Samsung devices, how-tos, reviews, stuff like that. This particular video is going to be about TVs. Um, it's kind of a passion of mine on the side. I'm a big display enthusiast. Uh, I've been keeping up with QD OLED for about a year and a half now. I've been keeping track of the MLA OLED initiatives for like six months now. It's just kind of a side passion of mine. So I figure I'd want to start the year off by doing a video on it. We have a CES 2023 going on right now. It just started today. They're actually going to be unveiling the products and new devices tomorrow. And uh, there's a lot of new advancements for TVs. But for this particular video, and for those of you that are looking at this channel for the first time, um, I'm going to be focusing on my TV purchasing experience that I've had here at the end of 2022. Um, and I'll tell you guys straight up front, um, it was a very grueling and time-consuming and uh, very emotional, very emotional and draining experience. Um, oh, and by the way, I should say I'm not going to do any edits or any cuts in this particular video. It's just going to be one long video of me talking while we have some footage being displayed from the LG G2. So uh, the whole point of this really is to talk about the entire experience, which is about two and a half months long of doing endless research and uh, just weighing all the pros and cons of the top tier TVs for this past year. Um, this is without a doubt my biggest TV purchase I've ever made, um, by far, by far. Um, and I wanted to get it right. You know, I figure, you know what, I'll play the return game and do the exchanges until I find a panel and an overall TV experience that, you know, makes me happy. And I've landed on it. I've landed on it for sure. I'm done. I'm definitely done. Uh, I'm landed on the G2. I love this TV. Uh, the longer I have it, the more I'm enjoying it. Um, and I started off with the C2. Let me put a picture up here on the screen. You'll see the C2 is hanging up on the wall. The G2 is down on the floor. Um, I started with it thinking it would be my end all. Um, but I decided that I just wanted a little bit more. So the G2 came down in price um, over the Black Friday period of the holiday. Because uh, there was about a $550 difference, and it got down to like a $250 difference. So I'm like, you know what? Let me order the G2, and if I don't like it much more, I'll just send it back. But if I like it a lot more, I'll go ahead and just pay that little bit extra, and I'll send the C2 back. Well, the C2 is no longer with me. So, um, But the other thing, too, is I couldn't just land on this particular item or this particular TV without checking out the QD OLEDs, right? So that's the whole point of this video is I really wanna share my experience of going to Best Buy multiple times, I went twice, um, and about all the, I don't wanna say requirements per se, but I just wanna go over all the things that I was looking for personally in a TV as a tech enthusiast, um, in hopes that maybe this can just be insightful for someone that's looking into making their TV purchase or wants to get acquainted with the uh, latest and greatest tech that's out there. So let me, uh, let me back step and we'll begin this story with uh, how this all started. So about two and a half, three months ago, I decided I want to get back into console gaming. Um, it's been since the Xbox 360, since I last owned a console. So it's been quite some time and I figured, you know what, they've got the PS5, the Xbox Series X now. I really want to give this a try. So, um, after a lot of debating back and forth and, you know, doing that battle of picking out the right system for myself, I ended up with the Xbox Series X and set it up in my office, um, which is a very bright room, by the way. Um, the lights that I use here for doing these YouTube videos are 2300 lumen lights, and I have two of them sitting above me, as well as my YouTube lights that I use in addition to that. But um, I, the reason I'm mentioning that is because I think it's an important factor when choosing a TV that's appropriate for your room. And in the past, OLEDs have not been able to keep up with the demands of my living area. I'm like, my rooms are just too bright, you know, and th this room is no exception. So uh, with these 2300 lumen lights and stuff, um, I was really needing a system that's gonna, you know, keep up with my demands. 
So for the sake of the whole brightness thing, it's kind of the reason why I just kind of put OLED off to the side, you know, and I've been sticking with uh, QLED panels in the house. Um, so I started gaming on my TCL TV. It's a uh, five series, 4K, 60 Hertz, a really nice TV, 65 inches. Um, everything about it's great, but I will gotta, I do have to tell you that every time I fire up my Xbox and stuff, I just felt like I was missing out. You know, I was missing out on that 120 hertz. Um, I did have VRR, and it does have the um, low input latency setting and all that stuff on the TCL. Uh, not near to the degree of the LG. But uh, nonetheless, you know, it, it was serving me okay. But like I said, I just felt like I was missing out. And I'm like, you know what? If I'm going to go back into this hardcore all in, I want to have a TV that kind of matches up with it. So that's when I started doing my research, and a lot of folks were really chiming in on the LG C2 and the Samsung S95B, which is a QD OLED panel that came out earlier in 2022, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And uh, after a lot of back and forth, and just weighing in all the options, and considering that the C2 had Dolby Vision, the S95B doesn't, not a big factor, but just a factor, um, and also considering the build quality and just the reputation of the W OLED panels being out for so many years and being tried and true at this point versus brand new tech, uh, which I'm all I'm a big fan of. You know, I'm always a big fan of the brand new tech and trying it out, but not so much at this price point. You know, this is a really expensive venture for my family and I, and it's just not something I'm willing to take chances on or mess around with. So I started off with the C2. And um, so, you know, I'll say this. The C2, for all intents and purposes, is very similar to the G2. There's not that big a difference. But the problem I was facing with it, and it's not a problem, it's more of a concern. The concern that I was having with the C2 is that in almost all different settings, whether I was watching SDR, HDR, HLG HDR, uh, watching Dolby Vision content and whether or not I'm gaming in SDR, HDR, or Dolby Vision, it didn't matter. In all those different configurations, I always had the panel pretty much maxed out, pretty close to the max that it could go. And my concern, you know, for the lifetime of the panel is that I'm going to be maxing this panel out at near full brightness. I'm really running the risk of burn in, and I'm really concerned that this thing doesn't have a heat sink for my use case. Because there's one other thing I forgot to point out too, or I shouldn't say I forgot, I just haven't got to it yet. This will be one of those long-winded videos. And uh, do keep in mind, this is my first like voiceover video. I'm normally in the videos of some form. Um, so this is the first one that I'm not. So it's a little bit different for me. But um, one thing I need to preface with is that I was actually born legally blind. I have um, a pretty rare eye condition that runs on my mom's side of the family. And one of the problems that it presents is that we have very, very poor night vision. Like when you guys are out looking at the night sky, most people are able to see plenty of stars when they look up. Uh, for me, in my entire lifetime, the most I've ever seen at once is like three or four stars. That's it. I, I just don't take in as much light as a normal person's eyes. Um, and the reason I'm kind of mentioning this is because it's all the more reason for me to need a brighter TV and kind of the reason I've just been putting off OLEDs even though I know they look the best you know there's no denying that the picture quality speaks for itself but just that brightness you know I need that bright panel but uh so I, I had the C2 and I was actually pretty impressed with the brightness I was like wow OLEDs come a long way since I first saw it you know this is uh first OLED panels I saw were like seven or eight years ago um so I was like, wow, this is really impressive. But you know, that honeymoon period started to wear off and I was still well within my return window of the C2 and then the G2 got knocked down in price. You know, I kept looking and I'm like, man, you know, the C2 is doing it for me, but I really feel like I'm just kind of taking it to the edge, you know, at every moment. So I decided to give the G2 a shot and uh, here I'll show that pic again, G2 on the floor, C2 up there, up on the wall. And uh, right away, I can, I can definitely say this for certain, there was a noticeably, uh, you know, difference in brightness. There's a definite boost in brightness, not just on highlights, but, you know, greens, some of the reds. Um, you know, I was noticing it right away. I even brought my uh, fiance in to take a look and uh, she noticed the same thing as well. So 
it's uh, it's just one of those things that it was like it really caught me off guard. It, that yeah, this thing is is plenty bright enough and all that, but uh, I just want to I wanted to get the G2. And I'm sorry if I kind of lost my wording there. Something came up on my computer, so I got a little distracted. So um, I got the G2, and I, you know, like I said, it's a little bit brighter. You can definitely notice it. Uh, but the thing that really kind of made me lean on keeping the G2 over the C2 is the fact that I can now lower the OLED pixel brightness and the contrast on pretty much all my content. Not that you want to do that for HDR. HDR, you want to leave OLED at one OLED pixel brightness at 100. You want to leave contrast at 100. But uh, I noticed on the C2, I was staying more in the standard picture mode. Sometimes I would pump it up into vivid. Here on the G2, I find myself comfortably watching the panel in filmmaker mode, which is significantly less bright than standard mode and definitely a lot br less bright than vivid, for sure, not even a comparison. So um, it just, it, it's one of those things where I was like, well, this is kind of leaning me in this direction because I, I want the longevity of the panel. I don't want to have to worry about this for a few years. And I figure with the heat sink on, with the five-year panel warranty, uh, and with me reducing the brightness a little bit because it doesn't need to be as bright, the G2 is just going to be the safer long-term buy. Uh, the other thing I really liked about the G2, and I don't really hear too many people talking about this, but I have mine flush wall mounted. I took the time to do that. And I'll tell you guys what, here I'll put some footage up here of what it looks like from the side and stuff. Holy moly, it looks epic hanging on the wall like this. Um, I still have to do a little bit of cable management on it. Uh, nothing major, but uh, you know, run those little covers down the wall. That's all I'm gonna do. But uh, just having it flush against that wall, it literally comes off the wall one inch, top to bottom. There's no variance or anything like that. Um, and that flush mounting gives you a, the ability to kind of level it left to right in case you didn't mount it perfectly. So I really love the flush wall mounting about it. And there's just a, you know, the little like, details that I liked on the G2 or that I like on the G2 more than the C2. Um, I, I do like the build quality a little bit better, the build quality a little bit better. Um, I, I just feel like it's going to hold up over the test of time more. Uh, my family and I does tend to, we do tend to move quite a bit. So I, I definitely have no concerns moving this G2 around. It's like built like a tank. Um, outside of the obvious of it being a little bit brighter, in all situations. Um, the other thing that not just myself, I, I didn't just notice this, but my fiance as well, we both noticed that the motion handling on the G2 is just a little bit better than the C2. It's not a night and day thing. There's nothing night and day between the C2 and G2. They are similar enough to be comparable TVs for sure. But it's just those little things, you know, the motion's a little bit better. I'm able to get uh, you know, a little more brightness from the same settings that I would use on, say, um, you know, the, uh, on the C2. And uh, here on the screen, you see we're looking at a screen uniformity test. Um, so, and the thing is, it just kind of edges out the C2 in all areas, except for maybe the audio. I think the C2 audio was just a little bit better than the G2, which is a little strange considering it has um, a lower RMS uh, speaker configuration but uh, I do think it is a little bit better than the G2. So on the screen uniformity test that we've been looking at here, um, this G2 in the 65 inch, that's the size that I have, it's known to have quite a bit of like pinkish tint on the left hand side. And I wanted to include this test in here just to kind of show that it's not really reflecting on my panel per se. Of course, you're looking at a full pink window right now, but I mean, when we're looking at the white sections in this section here, I'd say I got a pretty good panel. Um, if I had to rate this panel between, you know, between this panel and the C2, I would say the C2 is like an A minus to a B plus, and I'll give the G2 like a B minus. Um, I think the C2 had a little bit better uniformity because uh, I do have a little bit of like a, a tad bit of vertical banding on the left side, and there's a little bit of a horizontal band up top during like two of these different screens, and only two of them. Um, but I did notice them when I reran the test earlier this morning because this footage this footage was shot like a week week and a half ago something like that um, It's going away. 
that's what I'm noticing. So apparently over time, these things kind of work themselves out. But keep in mind, you can't see any of this when content is playing. Not whatsoever. No, <laughs> you can look for it all you want. Trust me, I've tried. I'm like OCD when it comes to looking at this stuff. I grabbed my magnifying lens. I've zoomed in and done pixel peeping with my phone camera. All the little things that, you know, us TV nerds, we do when we first get our panels, you know. And everything checks out. Everything's legit. Um, one thing you may notice, and I forgot to mention this, is while you're looking at this footage on the screen, you may notice a little bit of a pixelated border around the entire screen, you know, where the screen kind of meets the uh, edge of the panel, or I should say the bezel. Uh, that's not in real life. That's just my camera showing it that way. And I noticed that when reviewing the footage, it looked kind of weird. So it's not like that at all in real life. Um, and all this footage we've been looking at up until now, it's pretty much all been SDR, uh, OLED pixel brightness at about 70, contrast at 80. I keep the color volume at around 65 or so. Um, and uh, pretty much watch everything in filmmaker mode. The only adjustment I do to filmmaker mode is I know you're supposed to keep it at warm 50. I'm not a fan of warm 50. I, I take it down to warm 40, um, even though that's still a warm picture but I just can't quite stand that warm 50. I'm kind of gravitating towards the warmer picture, but it's taking some time. So I'm at warm 40 on filmmaker mode. You will see as some of this footage is getting shown, we're, we're about to wrap up the uniformity test and head over into some HDR content. Uh, you will notice I kind of switch back and forth between like uh, filmmaker mode, then vivid once in a while. And I'll also switch between all the other modes, like standard, filmmaker, or not filmmaker, but cinema, cinema home, IFS daylight, IFS darkroom, all those different modes. So you'll see that come up later in this video as we're talking. But for the most part, all this footage you're seeing is in filmmaker mode, um, which is known to like uh, basically be as close as possible to the creator's intent, right? So it's, it's mastered and it's designed to be watched in that mode. And I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Um, so let me talk about my experience now of going into Best Buy and checking out the QD OLEDs and comparing them to this. So like I mentioned, I started off with the C2, right? And then uh, I got the G2 and was auditioning in it, auditioning it. And both panels were within the return window. No problems with that. So I decided, you know what? Let's just make the hour-long trip to a Best Buy and let's go check out the QD OLED since I'm still in the return window. And if I'm just wowed by, you know, either the Sony A95K or I'm wowed by the S95B, I'll return both of these LGs. You know, I'm just playing the game this year. The first time I've ever done this with a TV. And, you know, and once I started on this path, I knew the whole thing was just going to be a pain in the rear. And it has been, and like I said, very emotionally and just mentally draining. Um, all the subreddits, all the YouTube videos, all the comments, my goodness. So I finally talked the family into going. It didn't take much convincing. I just kind of brought it up on a Sunday morning. Hey, baby, I want to grab the kids and let's go head into the main town. Um, I don't really want to mention where I live, but the main town's about an hour from where I'm at. I want to go check out a couple TVs. And she's like, God, you're still haven't decided. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I just, I, I gotta see it. You know, I gotta know what I'm missing in order to feel content with what I have. Does that make any sense? You know what I mean? It's like that, that fear of missing out, that FOMO thing, you know, it's definitely a real thing. So we, uh, we headed off to Best Buy um, and there's two locations in the main town I'm talking about. And at the first one, they only had the A95K. So I was talking to the Best Buy guy, and to make a long story short, uh, after about 20 to 25 minutes, I ended up into the Magnolia section of Best Buy, which is a very dark room. Everything's dark. So my, and the guy says, it's over there. The A95's there, and we don't have the S95B here. You're gonna have to go to our main store. So I'm like, oh crap, that kind of sucks, but let's go ahead and check out this Sony. So I go into the Magnolia room thinking to myself, and maybe this is just, full-heartedness on my part or wishful thinking but I was thinking that this QDL OLED panel is going to stand out like a sore thumb because all I kept hearing about is oh it's so bright and the color volume is so much better because that's what QD OLED brings to the table right you're not pushing the light with a white sub pixel you're pushing three sub pixels they're all getting the, the their same volume and uh, they're getting their peak brightness from color so you're getting a wider color gamut wider color range 
from these QD OLEDs. And the brightness, like for the S95B, that came out rocking 1500 nits when it first came out. But it's of course later been nerfed by software updates. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. It's kind of why I don't have that panel right now. Um, so I finally tracked down the A95K. And well, let me back step. Like I said, I'm in the Magnolia room thinking that this thing is gonna stand out like a sore thumb. I didn't see anything stand out. All, all the TVs basically look the same. So after a couple minutes of browsing around and getting a confirmation from one of the Best Buy employees, hey, is this really the A95K? They're like, yeah, that's it. That's the new Quantum Dot one. I, I was finally looking at it. First time ever looking at one of these Quantum Dot OLED panels. And I'm being 100% honest, and I know a lot of people are gonna probably call BS on this one, but I'm being very sincere, 100%. Nothing. The A95K did absolutely nothing for me. The G2 blew it, blew it out of the water. I'm not joking at all. It's not an exaggeration of any shape or form. The screen was not bright. I didn't see anything that stood out about it that looked great. It didn't look any different than any other panels that it was sitting next to. And to be quite frank, it looked like it had about half the brightness of the G2 that I already had at home. Uh, needless to say, I was disappointed. But on the inside, I was telling myself, well, this is Best Buy not setting up the panel correctly. It's in a store demo mode that they haven't even looked at. And this content isn't really doing the TV justice. But to be fair, the same content was being played on all the Sony TVs. And they all basically looked about the same. Did not knock my socks off at all. So uh, I had my fiance take a look too. And the reason I mention her a lot is because she has perfect vision. Oh, oh, look at this here. We're now taking a look at the side shot of the flush wall mounting. Yeah, man, that looks, that looks so sick. I'm telling you in person, it's pretty awesome. Um, so I brought her over to the A95K and she's like, if you trade in your, she didn't say G2 because she doesn't know TVs from Adam, but she's basically said, if you trade in your TV for this, something's wrong with you. And I'm like, no, we're, we're not doing that. But I did tell her, I'm like, you know, this kind of brings me a little bit of peace of mind that I made a good decision, but I still want to see the Samsung. So we made the trip. We headed out another 15 minutes or so to the other Best Buy. And um, they didn't have the A95K there. Uh, they did have the G2 and all that. And they also had the 55 inch and the 65 inch S95B. So here I am in Sam's, in uh, Best Buy, I should say. And I start talking with this other gentleman who ended up picking up a C2 for his dad. He, he was looking at the S95B as well. But after looking at how thin the panel is, he, he was a little bit of concerned about his dad maybe accidentally knocking it over and basically destroying the TV. And I'm like, yeah, it is a real thin panel. So I start looking at this 55 inch and the 65 inch, mostly the 55 inch and a different story here, way different than the A95K. Right off the bat, I'm like, okay, all right, this, this is looking pretty good. So the uh, Samsung demo that they had was basically like some Lord of the Rings footage, a little bit of their products like the Freestyle projector, and I think they showed like the S22 Ultra, some stuff like that. And then it jumped into um, some footage of Halo Infinite, some gameplay, and some of the, uh, you know, just some of the um, dialogues and stuff that happened in the game. Uh, the cutscenes, I'm sorry, I just drew a blank there. And then it jumped into some other content where it was like some white buildings and all this stuff with rooftops. Um, and the total demo length was probably about 15 minutes or so. So I got there right at the beginning of the demo. Well, as it turns out, since I watched it like three times. And right off the bat, I was thinking to myself, wow, this looks really good. This, this looks pretty incredible. I got there towards the end of the Lord of the Rings demo stuff. I'm like, the skin tones look pretty good. Maybe a little bit elevated, but then again, I'm telling myself it's in store mode. You know, it's like the equivalent of Vivid. Everything's gonna be a little bit boosted. But I was pretty, pretty impressed. The things were looking pretty good. The color volume, I could definitely see a little bit of difference there. And uh, I was starting to see what people meant by, you know, the image looks like it just kind of pops a little bit. And it does, it has a little bit of a pop flare to it. Uh, but at the same time, I was, you know, being matter of fact about it and being analytical and looking at it, thinking to myself, you know, it's great and stuff, but it's not any brighter than the G2. That's for sure. Not what I'm seeing in the store. It wasn't anywhere near as bright. I shouldn't say that. It's not that it wasn't near as bright. It just didn't wow me in that it was any brighter at all. Uh, look comparable, I should say. 
Um, and I was just kind of taken back that, you know, this looks really nice and stuff, but in order for me to take the plunge of the S95B with the super thin panel that a lot of people have been reporting, you know, they've been getting bent panels with all the crazy firmware, firmware updates that Samsung's been doing. They've done a ton of firmware updates on this TV. It's kind of ridiculous. And considering some people have been getting panels to where like half the panel will turn red, half of it will turn green. I was like, in order for me to take those kind of chances, this panel has got to wow me. The panel itself, you know, not the rest of the TV, because I already knew what to expect there. I've done plenty of research, but the panel itself has to wow me. And so far up to this point, I was not wowed, not at all. I was, I was impressed. It looked good. No complaints with it. You know, if I walked out of the store that day with that TV, no, no problems. You know, it's a great looking TV. Then it got to the one scene that I told you guys about. Oh, actually, let me take one step back. So before it got to this scene, and, and this was a real interesting observation and one that I was not expecting. The gentleman that, uh, was, that I was talking with, he brought this up to my, point, uh, to my attention and I was starting to notice it while he mentioned it. And that is, he's like, hey, look, look back at the 65 inch and keep in mind that the 65 inch and the 55 inch both had the same content plane at the same time. So both, both of them are playing the content at the same time and like, he brought it to my attention and I immediately noticed it once he mentioned it. And that is the 55 inch looks much sharper, much higher resolution, like noticeably sharper than the 65 inch. Like I have never seen a disparity like that between 10 inches of screen size for the same type of panel. And what I mean by that is like if I went back and looked at an old C1 that's 55 inches and I look at a 65 inch C1, the same panel, I don't really notice much of a difference. I mean, of course it's gonna be a higher pixel density, right? You're, you have 10 inches less of the screen with the same number of pixels, but visually, it, it was never really apparent to me that you would notice those pixels. However, on the S95B, I was absolutely taken back by how much uh, of a difference there is between the 55 and the 65 inch version. Enough so that like I'm really concerned with them going up in size because you can really start to see the pixels on the 65 inch. Because on a lot of the demo material, they had this Samsung logo, which is just their word, right? I, I put it up on my thumbnails for all my videos. That, that's Samsung font that they use. On the 55 inch, that font and the text looked crystal clear, perfectly clear, like breathtakingly clear. And on the 65 inch, you could see jagged little edges all over that text enough so to where and that's a thing is like i'm only interested in the 65 no interest in the 55 maybe later on down the road i'll pick up a 55 inch to kind of play around with but as my main tv it's got to be 65 minimum or nothing you know my main one in my office here that's what i want to game on i set it a perfect distance for a 65 inch so 55 inch was out of the question for me and that difference, and the only way you're going to know this is if you like go into a Best Buy or go into some place in your area that has both size panels and you get to see them side by side. I guarantee you 100%, 100,000%, you will definitely see a clarity difference between the 55-inch S95B and the 65-inch S95B. And if I, I'm still thinking about buying the panel later on in the year when because right now the 2023 models are coming out right samsung's talking about 2000 nits of brightness the price on these is going to plummet here in a few months so i'm definitely thinking about picking up a used one or uh, maybe a refurb or an open box something that i can get for you know you know pennies on the dollar so to speak you know a few hundred dollars instead of the asking price that it's at now to play around with if i do i'll get the 55 inch I'm not going to touch that 65 inch because a 55 inch blew it out of the water. I was really taken back. So that's one thing we noticed. And now that gets me to the scene that I want to talk about. So I'm watching the Halo Infinite. Everything looks great. You know, real comparable to the G2. I'm going to be honest with you. Not much of a difference. I, I was expecting a little more on that whole color volume thing, this and that. Um, and maybe it's, just a, maybe it's just I got used to the G2 and I got the settings kind of dialed in how I like. But nonetheless, I, I wasn't wowed up until the next scene came up. And the next scene was some content that showed like these white houses, almost looked like a cathedral with like some red tile rooftops. There were some green pine trees off in the distance and it was a slow panning shot. Some street, sides came, street signs came in 
And when that picture came up, I crap you not, I'm being 100% honest, my jaw hit the floor and so did the dude that was standing next to me, the guy I was talking to, him too. And we both looked at each other, we looked back at the TV and we both looked at each other and we both said, oh my God, are you kidding me? Holy crap, that looks amazing. I mean, it looked amazing. Nothing short, I mean, and I, I'm trying to like re-envision that memory. Like, I will not forget it. I have never seen a picture look so good on a TV in my entire life, ever, on any type of panel. And right then and there, I'm like, holy crap. I think I, I gotta take the G2 back. I gotta return the G2. This is unbelievable. I just can't even believe this. It was so unbelievable that even though my family is out waiting in the car for me, because they didn't want to come into the second Best Buy, they were in there on the first one, I kind of forgot about my family for like another 20 to 30 minutes while that demo footage replayed and got back to that one scene two more times. I was literally in awe. I couldn't believe it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I, I was very taken back by what I was seeing, just the pop the luminosity, the whites were hitting, everything was hitting. Uh, it was just like a smorgasbord for your, for your eyes. It was uh, a sight that I'd never seen before on a television. Um, and it amazed me. And as the second time I watched it, you know, I was like, wow, this is just incredible. And even on the third time, after it kind of settled in and I'm kind of thinking of my, you know, I start nitpicking. I'm like, well, it is amazing, now, now let's see what's making it amazing. You know, we kind of have a 3D effect on this object. The street sign kind of looks fake because now it's kind of popping out of the TV. But, and I'm sitting here trying to scrutinize this panel, but at the same time, I can't help to myself, dang, that looks amazing. Wow, I wouldn't mind that in my house at all. That looks really, really good. I mean, I'm being serious too, it was amazing. So uh, after about 45 minutes of Best Buy, oh, I should mention too, <laughs> before I left Best Buy, Best Buy, I checked out the G2 they had there. Oh my God, it looked terrible. I don't know what they did to it, what kind of settings they had, but it looked like complete garbage. So if you see a G2 in the store and it looks like crap, they probably don't have it set up right. You know, just like I mentioned the A95K at the other Best Buy, I don't think it was set up right either because I guarantee that TV is going to perform a lot closer to the S95B. So nonetheless, I walked out of Best Buy extremely impressed. And I got to, I got to our truck and I opened the door and uh, my fiance is like, whoa, what's the matter? I'm like, ah, I think when we get home, I need to box up the G2. She's like, what? No, no, come on. Anyway, so we, we had a long talk on the way home. And the deal was, is that we were headed back into town in like three days anyway uh, for uh, my son's doctor's appointment. So I'm like, okay, well, I'll tell you what, when we go back to this doctor's appointment, even though I have to get back to work, we're still going to take a little bit of time and we're going to stop by Best Buy. And this time I'm going to have you look at it. So that's what we did. I was patient. You know, believe me, I wanted to hit that order button on that S95B the second I got home. Believe that. I was impressed. And uh, so I waited out you know, three days or so. And uh, we go to the doctor's appointment. Everything worked out great for my son. And we go to the Best Buy. And, you know, by this time, well, here's, here's something happened in this point of time. And I think this is kind of what made the difference is that in those three days, I came across some HLG HDR content on the G2. And when that HLG HDR content popped up on my screen, I pretty much had almost the same reaction that I had for the S95B. Like, holy crap look at that contrast look how white that building is look at it had that same pop and then when i put the when i put the g2 over into vivid mode it looked exactly like the s95b I, and when i mean exactly like the color volume was there and i know it's not technically capable i'm just going by what it looked like in person to the human eyes you know so that had me that would have me question everything like wow maybe it's our content or whatever you know because this HLG HDR content is looking amazing on the G2 like blowing my mind away amazing like I sat there and watched these people walk downtown in Japan for like 45 minutes on my screen that's the whole video it's just people walking around I couldn't stop walking so in those 3 days I had that experience with the G2 so and it's important to keep that in mind 
So now we're at Best Buy again, round two, or I should say round three, right? So first Best Buy with the A95K, second one with the S95B, and now we're making another trip back to the main town about an hour away. And this time I have the family with me because I really want to get my fiance's opinion. She's not tech savvy in any way, but she is a real good judge of picture quality and just, you know, if I'm being stupid or not, she'll put me in check. Like, what are you seeing here, man? You know, she's, she's good at that. So we go in there and I can tell by looking at the panels from the front of the store all the way to the back that the good part of the demo, because I could see the screens all the way in the back of the screen, the good part of the demo was just wrapping up. I'm like, crap, man, we just missed it. So we get back to the S95Bs and, uh, you know, it's doing the Lord of the Rings stuff and showing the Samsung promotions. And, you know, I'm like, so what do you think so far? And she's like, you know, to be honest, it just looks like the TV I have at home. And she's all, what am I supposed to see? And I'm like, well, you shouldn't have to ask those type of questions. This is the quantum dot, quantum dot panel. It should speak for itself. And she's all, nothing's speaking here to me. This looks exactly like what you show me at home. And I have to agree with her. Watching the Halo stuff and watching the Lord of the Rings, uh, you know, maybe a little bit more color volume, maybe had a tad bit more of a 3D effect, which I, I don't know. I kind of like it in some scenes, but not really in like dark movie scenes. I don't want that. I want to just watch the movie, you know. So it had a little bit of that going on. And I'll tell you what, I wasn't impressed, near as impressed the second time coming back and watching it as I was the first. Uh, maybe it's because we just wrapped up a long doctor's appointment. Maybe because I just wasn't quite in the mood as I was the first time. I don't know. But it sure didn't hit me as hard. But I kept telling her, I'm like, okay, just, just hold on. It's going to be a few more minutes, and then we're going to get to this content that you have got to see. You just got to see it on here. It's going to blow your mind. So it finally happens. It finally gets to that point of the content. And guess what happened? Nothing. Nothing. I, I, my heart rate didn't raise. There were no hairs on the back of my neck. The picture didn't, it, it, I mean, it looked great. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it didn't look great or not as great as the first time, but I'm thinking maybe since I saw some proper HLG HDR on the G2, that it kind of uh, set me in line for what to expect, you know? Because uh, this is like, this G2 is in the C2, I should say. It's my first OLED panel. I've had plenty of OLED screens, like my laptop has an OLED screen, but as far as a television, you know, a big screen TV, it's my first time having OLED. So when this second, when this screen came up for the second time, I really think it's just a combination of me sort of getting used to OLED at this point and also seeing that HLG HDR because I was not blown away at all the second time I saw it. And I'm being very genuine about it. Like I was like, what the heck happened? And I don't know if it just didn't seem as bright as it did the first time that I saw it with the other gentleman, because we were both floored. Me and this other guy were floored. We couldn't believe it. But it didn't seem near as bright. All the other content did. I almost wonder if, like, ABL was kicking in, you know, because the TVs run nonstop throughout the day. Whatever it was, it, it, that was kind of the straw right there, or the, the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak, on me considering the S95B. Because I, believe me guys, I was, this was a deciding factor. I was ready to make the commitment of boxing up the G2. I was already going to do it for the C2 anyway and getting the S95B. Um, but, you know, the thing is, is the, the problem I have with the panel in general is that Samsung has been doing update after update, lowering the brightness, tweaking the picture to where everyone's having to adjust their panel settings. Uh, the panel is so thin. I mean, it is incredibly thin. It's, it looks pretty amazing. It looks really cool in person when you look. You do a side, look, you know, a side profile view of the TV. It looks really great. And both panels they had, the 55 and the 65 inch, were perfectly straight. There were no bends in them, so there's none of that stuff going on. And definitely a futuristic and cool looking TV. But with all these problems with the firmware updates, people having issues with the panel not powering on correctly. I can't have that for my main TV. You know, I'm okay with that as like a secondary TV or something, but not as a main one and not as a TV that, you know, I need to push that power button and it needs to come on and do its magic every single time. That's what I want in a TV and that's what I expect. And why not? All my TVs to date have been this way. Uh, you know, I typically just use like TCLs um, and they worked out great. I don't have any problems with TCLs. I didn't want to have these, I didn't want to have problems with a flagship TV. 
So it kind of kind of just knocked the S95B out of it for me. But so let's take a let's take a step back now and kind of talk about some of the pros and the cons and what I think you should do or just my recommendations. I can't tell anyone what to do. You know, you, you know what you want. But just my recommendations with everything coming out right now cuz we we are in kind of a changing period. Uh, in the TV world, you know, we've been having OLED panels now, and OLED's been like the de facto standard for the last eight or nine years. Uh, really, like the fast fiber six years, it's really taken off since burn ins become less of an issue. And, you know, LG started with these panels, and, uh, you know, they've done a lot of work on them. And um, I should preface too, I'm not like an LG fanboy. If anything, I'm a Samsung fanboy. This is a Samsung channel, everything I talk about is Samsung. So that, that's saying something for LG. And I've never owned an LG panel before in my life or TV. This is my first LG TV. Well, technically the C2 is, but two weeks later, the G2 is my first LG TV. Um, and I just want to talk about now like the pros and cons. And I know I'm kind of going all over the place because this is like a voiceover, uh, minimal scripting here. So um, this TV really checks off all of the check boxes that I wanted. You know, for gaming, I want all the green check boxes on my Xbox, which it does, you know, including Dolby Vision. And that, that's another thing, too, with the S95B is all Samsung displays, um, they all lack support for Dolby Vision. You won't find a Samsung display that supports it. I mean, they just don't have the license for it. And I always see in the comments section of, of videos, well, Dolby Vision isn't that big a deal. The S95B, it gets so much brighter and this and that, you don't need Dolby Vision. No, 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 no. That's not how it works with me. That's not how it works at all. Dolby Vision isn't about brightness or, you know, gaining this or that. Dolby Vision is about watching content that has been rendered and mastered in the creator's intent. That's the whole point of HDR mastering. That's the whole point of Dolby Vision mastering. You know, it takes time for them to do that. They, they reference to a reference monitor, you know? They don't do that for nothing. And for me, having the Dolby Vision option, though it may not be a requirement, I like to have the option. I wanna be the judge of it. You know, I know a lot of people say, well, you don't need Dolby Vision. Well, let me decide. How about if I turn, if I watch HDR content in HDR, and if it supports Dolby Vision, I'll try it in Dolby Vision as well. And if I like more one more than the other, I'll stick with that. Same with gaming. So gaming, Dolby Vision in general, I find does make the games just a tad bit less bright. However, I feel like the color reproduction and just the, the granularity of the details is better with DV. And I use Dolby Vision for Flight Simulator. And uh, what's the other one? Forza Horizon. I play both those games in Dolby Vision a lot because of that little benefit to the to the shadow detail that it gets and I notice it I'll switch it between HDR and Dolby Vision and that's my whole point is I want to control that I want to have the option I don't want to have options taken away from me so Dolby Vision to me is kind of a big deal because if I'm paying flagship money I want a flagship experience all around the board and just because a panel gets super bright doesn't mean it shouldn't have Dolby Vision it has nothing to do with the brightness you know, I don't, I don't know why people keep saying that in all these comments and stuff. I, well, I know why. It's because, um, you know, you buy a product and you want to stick up for it, you know, buyer confirmation, so to speak. So you're going to downplay things that it doesn't have. And I'm just not that type of person. I, I look at things very matter-of-factly, like this TV has A, B, C, and E. This TV has A, B, C, and D. All right, which of those A, B, C, and E and A, B, C, and D are the priority for me? in my own personal use case. That's how I view things, and I'm very OCD about it, big time. So I like having Dolby Vision. Is it a necessity? No, of course not. None of this stuff's a necessity, right? None of it is, really. But you still want it. Don't, wouldn't you rather be caught with than without in this situation? Don't you want to have the option? I know I did. So I'm glad that it has Dolby Vision. It has the HDR. It has, for the gaming side, the VRR, the auto low latency. I mean, I think everyone that's familiar with LG TVs knows that they are pretty much a premium experience for gaming, right? Everything's supported. All your checkboxes on your Xbox. It's going to support everything on your PS5 and all the backwards compatibility. Uh, the other thing I like about it, too, is that it has four um, 2.1 HDMI ports, where on the E95K, you only get two of them, which is really weird because they're using the old MediaTek chipset, which is going to get replaced this year. 
Another reason why I kind of didn't even really want to lean on the very expensive Sony is because it's using a pretty old SOC in it. Like, really old, actually. That MediaTek chip's been out for years now. So they're going to up that in this year's panel, for sure. That's, that can be pretty much a guarantee. You're going to see four 48 gigabits per second HDMI 2.1 panels on all the Sonys moving forward. That's pretty much guaranteed on their flagships. But the A95K didn't have that. But the G2 does. And so does a C2. And it just ticks off all those right checkboxes when I game. The other thing I like about it too is the motion handling. So that is something that I forgot to mention when talking about the S95B. In looking at the Halo Infinite gameplay footage, and you gotta remember this content is like canned content, like they recorded it, which means it should be it should be playing back, excuse me, <clears throat> it should be playing back butterly butterly smooth, right? It wasn't the case. When I was watching that Halo Infinite gameplay footage for the S95B, I swear I could see some like ghosting artifacts and just some weirdness to it, uh, you know, in comparing it to the C2 and G2. And, you know, I don't know how much I would notice that if I had both panels side by side in person, but it did, there was a couple spots where it kind of had me questioning things. And that's one thing I really like about this G2 is that there's no surprises. The motion is just super smooth. Uh, you know, everything about it's very predictable and it just feels like a top shelf experience. So, I mean, the pros for me is the build quality. I really like that it basically supports everything under the sun. You know, like we mentioned the Dolby Vision, all the HDR, all the formats. Any format you want to load and play on this thing, it'll do it. Uh, the other thing I like about the G2 and I also liked on the C2 as well is the upscaling like it does a really good job of like upscaling 1080p 4k content uh you, you know up to 4k i should say um and just lower lower grade quality content because i watch a lot of you uh, youtube like um 4k nature videos stuff like that i have one going on right now while i'm talking into this lav mic and it's like some city skyscrape and it's beautiful it's just Ultra HD, HLG, HDR, blah, 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 and it runs for like 12 hours. And I've never done this on a TV, but I just find myself keeping it up and playing often. And I can't help but just stare at it. I'm doing it right now. Um, wow. And it just looks amazing. So, I mean, the G2 for me kind of represents a no surprise um, and no compromise type of television that's working out really good. So, you know, the elephant in the room is, it's like, wow, it's really late in 2022. Why didn't you just wait till 2023 with all the new TVs? Well, I have a strong reason for that. And actually, just based on the announcements today, it makes me even feel better about my G2 purchase. And that is, um, it is confirmed that LG is coming out with MLA OLED this year. We should see the panel starting tomorrow, or actually today by the time this video airs or airs, <laughs> gets uploaded. What am I talking about? Um, time this video uploads. Um, and Samsung is making some additional changes to their QD OLED and is trying to hit 2000 nits peak brightness. Everyone's chasing that brightness this year. That's what it's all about. I don't hear anything about motion handling. I don't hear anything about improved refresh rates or any of that. But what I'm getting at is we're kind of in a paradigm shift on TV tech of where we're headed. You know, So the G2 kind of represents the creme de la creme for W OLED panels. Like this is as good as it gets for a regular OLED panel that's been out, you know, for eight, nine, 10 years now. It's when they're introduced. This is as good as it gets. Whereas with the QD OLED and now MLA OLED coming out this year, everything's in its infancy, you know, and it's great. This is, you know, a stepping ground off of W OLED, but man, a lot of people are reporting issues. A lot of people reported burn-in on their S95B within two to three months, so they started scaling down the brightness. With MLA OLED, you're looking at a lot of glue and adhesive to keep each one of those lenses on top of those pixels. So there's a whole layer of complexity that's being added to this panel. And that's what I'm getting at, is we are now on the point of a shape shift in the TV market, and I really feel like things are gonna, it's gonna take another two to three years for this new tech that's coming out right now, like this year and the QD OLED of just this past year, for it to really get figured out and honed in by these TV manufacturers. And right now, we the people 
buying these products, I don't want to say we're like guinea pig testers because I know they do a lot of R&D. I know they do a lot of QC on these panels, but there's nothing like putting them out in the wild, out into the public with many people, with their many use cases, people leaving them on all day, some people turning them on and off, on and off quickly, some people not wanting to do updates, some people running in vivid mode all the time, some people not wanting their screens so bright. There's all these different use cases and things are getting flushed out with QD OLED. And MLA OLED, MLA OLED, hasn't even hit sh shelves yet. You know, it'll be coming out later this year and it too will have its first year problems. And then they'll come out with a little bit of refactoring and then we'll have year two and it'll get a little bit better than year one. And then we'll move into like year three and year four, just like we did with OLED, just like we did with QLED, just like we did with LED, just like we did with LCD, just like we have with every other panel type that's come out to date. It's always taken about three or four years for things to really get ironed out and then for companies to really just start focusing on honing that last bit of performance out of it. Because that's what's been happening to W OLED the past few years. The screens are just getting a little bit brighter, a little bit better, a little bit better, and a little bit better. You know, we're at the, we're past that point of making big changes to these panels. So, I mean, yeah, for me, it's kind of a peace of mind thing, knowing I have the best of the best of the W OLED while this newer tech gets fleshed out. And then I figure when it's time to upgrade, maybe, you know, three to four years from now, I know for certain, 100,000% certain that my next TV from the G2 is not going to be an experiment or a year one type experiment or anything like that. I'm going to be going from a polished G2 experience to a polished either MLA OLED or QD OLED experience. You know, I'm not going to be one of the, the guinea pig beta testers. And, and I'm not trying to insult anyone that's bought these panels like the A95K or S95B. They're extremely popular this year. I know a lot of folks are getting a lot of enjoyment out of them. But just for me, just for peace of mind, I feel really good about making that jump from the premier W OLED, you know, this flagship level W OLED experience, going into a great experience with either one of those two technologies. And I really, I can't predict which one's going to take off more than the other. I mean, QD OLED has already a season under its belt. It's been out since uh, April of 2022, um, even a little bit before that for the monitors on the uh, PC monitor side. But, you know, it, 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 it's been out for this period of time, but it's still so early in its life. And uh, with all the updates and, uh, it, it, you know, it, it's just that nervousness, you know, you get from new tech. And it's such an expensive investment, these TVs really are, that I, I personally just wasn't willing to take the chance. Hey, and I commend you guys that do and are having a, a good time with your panels. And, and like I said earlier in the video, I do want to get my hands on an S95B when they go down in price to experience QD OLED. I don't know if I can wait three or four years. You know, I'm a tech guy. I love new tech and I love display tech. So it's really hard for me right now to not have a panel that's QD OLED in my hands. It's going to be real hard on me in just a few months to not experience a MLA OLED. I'll definitely be going into a store to see it, just like I did with the QD OLED. I'll be checking them out. It's going to be hard not owning one and refraining from it, but I know in my heart of hearts I'm making the right decision, especially as a family guy. I don't have money to just throw around on TVs left and right. You know, it's got to be a sound investment and just a, a sound purchase overall. And I think the G2 really, it, it, it kind of fits fits the bill and it, it ticks off all those check boxes for me. Is it as bright as the S95B? Probably not, you know, if you were to max out that panel. But brightness isn't everything. And, and I don't know if I mentioned it at the beginning of the video or not, but like I said, I, I'm using two 2300 lumen uh, lights in my office. They're on right now while I'm watching the TV and sitting here talking with you guys. I have no problems, and I'm, I can't iterate this enough, I have zero problems seeing the screen. I have zero problems enjoying the brightness levels that it's at. I'm in filmmaker mode right now looking at it. Not the screen you guys are looking at. I'm just, I'm looking at the TV in person right now. It's in filmmaker mode. It is plenty bright. It's like I'm staring out at a window. I'm looking at the city landscape, the sun setting. It's beautiful. It's perfect. I wouldn't want it any brighter than it is right now. And that's the cool thing about this TV as well is that it's pretty easy to kind of land on some good settings for yourself and that's it. You never have to worry about it. 
There's not going to be any firmware updates that come along and nerf your, your picture settings. You're not going to have to readjust anything. Uh, I've had two firmware updates on this panel since I had it. One just came out like yesterday, the day before. And then there was one ready when I first got the TV. No, no noticeable impact to picture quality. Nothing like that. It was just behind the bug, behind the scenes bug fixes. Um, let's see. Well, I'm actually running out of footage to show you guys. There's like another 10 minutes I see on my timeline. So let me uh, try to wrap this up here. Um, you know, the, the I don't know. There's just a lot of little things about this panel that kind of added up to a complete package. The five-year warranty, the heat sink. Really? Uh, oh, that's the one thing about the heat sink. I'm, I'm glad we have a little bit more time. One of the things that um, I've noticed in like watching a lot of these um, YouTube videos and stuff is that heat sink really does help with image retention. It helps dissipate the pixels. You know, the, the image that's on the pixel once it's done with that image, which is great for, you know, preventing ghosting and for motion handling. And um, so it, it helps with that. So I like that heat sink. I really like the motion handling on this TV. That's one of the things that, you know, you can't really see in a video and you can't really, you don't really put your finger on it until you've had a TV for a while and you start to notice, wow, this, this thing kind of either sucks, like my, I'll be honest, my TCL 5 series, the, the motion on it, eh, leaves a lot to be desired, you know, but I didn't notice it at first. It's only after you watch some stuff and you, you vary up the content. I notice the motion is just blah on that TV, whereas the motion on the LG is just, it's really good. Like, it's really good. Everything's just buttery smooth no matter what I throw at it. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really at a loss of what else to say. I mean, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, again, my first LG panels, by far my most expensive TV purchase I've ever done in my life. Um, I've had a lot of uh, long nights of researching and being OCD about this because I'm just that way when I research things. But I got to tell you what, here in 2022... You know, well, now 2023, right? It's January 3rd. Like, you'll be able to find this TV at a much reduced rate here in just a few months once the 2023s come out. I'll tell you what, if you're, you know, unless you want that latest greatest and you're demanding the QD OLED or the MLA, this is a darn good TV. Just a solid all-around performer. Not just the panel, the entire television. You know, I, I really like the, uh, for my first time using the Magic Remote, I think it's pretty good. I like the Nintendo Wii, so it feels right at home for me. I, I can whip this thing around like nobody's business. It's, it's great. Um, Web OS is fine. No complaints. You know, nothing stands out. Not that I really care about the OS and stuff. I just need to get from one input to the next, honestly. HDMI for my Xbox and switch over to YouTube. That's all I really care about. But the thing that I, I think I really like about it is it's just a complete package. You know, it really is. Like, it's just built like a tank. It's super thin when you have it wall mounted. It looks gorgeous when you have it wall mounted. No, no one's going to say anything different about that. Anyone that's, if you end up getting a G2 and you take the time to flush wall mount it, it's definitely going to look impressive to you and anyone you show it to. Uh, so before I wrap up, any cons of this TV? Yeah, yeah, there's a couple. So the mounting hardware, and when I mean hardware, I mean the bolts that come with a flush mounting kit, they suck. They suck big time. I had one, one of the heads just ripped off right on mine. And I basically had to change the remounting position to be like an inch and a half lower than what I, I initially wanted it to. Because that head, the bolt just like ripped off right in the middle of me torquing it down. I wasn't even like close to the end or anything. It was just, it just torqued off. So I had to redo the whole mounting. So the hardware that comes with it sucks. The mounting bracket itself is fine, but just the bolts, they're kind of lame. Um, the only other issue that I have had is there was one time I had to turn, to turn off and then return on the HDMI deep color setting for the HDMI input my Xbox was connected to. Like uh, after the most recent update, for some reason it, it would only fire up in 1080p. I couldn't get 4K out of my Xbox and like all the green checkboxes that you're used to seeing, they all turned it out just to be red. So it just turned out to be that setting. I just had to flip it off, which puts it back into like non 4K mode for that HDMI input. Then I turned it back on, boom, problem resolved. Um, the only other hiccup that I have with this TV is that occasionally it will take a while when you first power it on to establish a Wi-Fi connection uh, with your router. It might take 30 seconds to a minute. 
Um, and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes your, your home screen and all that will load up right away. But every once in a while, it will take 30 seconds to a minute or so. I'll usually just come back to it real quick and then I'll notice the page is like loading up with, you know, all the ad content and all the junk that it throws at you. But that, that's when you know it's established its connection. Other than that, I, I really don't have any complaints with this TV. Um, the, I will say this, the longer I have it, the more I'm liking it. You know, and it's very rare for me to say something like that. Usually I start nitpicking a device to death. I'm like, oh man, I wish I wouldn't have bought this piece of crap. No, no, I mean, I, I'm still in the return window for it. I've got another two weeks that I can return this thing. I already sent the C2 back quite a while ago. Um, and I'm at a point where I'm, I'm no longer looking at any other panels. I'm not gonna compare it to anything else. I'm real happy with this G2 and I'm, I'm getting happier as each day goes by. And I'll tell you what guys, gaming on this thing is just, that's what I got it for. That's my main use case. Holy crap, man. I went on a Halo Infinite session last night. I was only, I only, t I told the family, I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna play for like half hour or so. Nah, nah, two and a half hours later, maybe three. <laughs> Once you pick up and start playing when you're using this OLED TV, man, especially one that hits you this hard with this level of brightness, because it, it really is a bright panel with that HDR. And I, I've been, I was playing it not in Dolby Vision, but HDR. Wow, man, it just hits you in all the right areas. Um, so I, uh, hopefully this footage turns out okay. I have no idea how it's gonna look. Um, you know, I'm using DaVinci Resolve, Resolve, but I don't have the Studio Edition, so I can't do like a true HDR or HLG export, but I can at least switch it over to 10-bit and switch it over to a wider, wider color gamut. So hopefully it helps pick up some of the details of this footage that you're seeing. And I can't believe it. I've actually talked your guys' ears off for an hour now, and I only have about five minutes left of footage to show, and it's the same footage you're showing, seeing here. A beautiful nighttime walk. This looks so much better in person, than this footage that you're seeing here. Um, yeah, if you have any questions or comments uh, about any of this stuff, feel free to drop them down in the comment section. I try to reply to every comment. And for my regular Samsung subscribers and stuff, we'll be back into our regular video starting on the next one, I promise. I, just, I wanted to do this video now to basically do a brain dump of all this, you know, because it's been on my mind. I've been going back and forth on this TV stuff behind the scenes, you know, outside of YouTube so much that I figure I better do this brain dump now and get it off my chest or else I'll probably never end up making this video. So that's the whole point of it. All right, this has been a long one. Hopefully everything turns out okay in the editor. And as always, thanks for watching.